So the Poisson principle essentially is uh, any flows in the body are proportional to the radius to the fourth power, the pressure gradient across you know, whatever that tube is, and it's, it's uh, inversely proportional to the viscosity and, if it's a tube, the length of the tube. So we actually use Poisson's principle a lot. Whenever you have a blocked uh, blood vessel or a blocked valve, the pressure gradient across it is going to be directly proportional to the amount of blood flow going through it as well. So in other words, you have a blockage and it presents a fixed resistance. Resistance is nothing more than the pressure gradient divided by the blood flow. So if I have a blockage that is moderate, my pressure gradient will be much higher if I have really high flow rates through it and it'll be much lower if I have very low flow rates through it. A good example of that is taking a, a hose. If you kink off a hose, the pressure gradient across that kink is gonna be much higher if you have the water turned up all the way versus if you just have a dribble going through it. And the same principle applies to heart valves and uh, what we call stenosis, arterial stenosis, blockages in the blood vessels. And so when I go about looking at how bad a valve blockage is, I actually have to take into account what is the flow rate through it, and that's all part of uh, uh, Poisson's principle as well. Um, there's other things to consider in, in Poisson's law. So, um, for example, if I have a blocked blood vessel, a blockage in a blood vessel, the, the amount of flow disturbance is proportional to the radius to the fourth power, to the fourth power. And so what that means is as a blockage becomes worse and worse and worse, the, as the lumen or the opening gets smaller and smaller, it is not a linear relationship between the radius, how much it, it's narrowed, and what the actual flow rates are going, how the flow rates are going to be reduced. So we, we think about those things in terms of how bad a blockage has to be before it needs to be dealt with and should be causing somebody's symptoms. As a cardiologist, the, the things that we think about are the coronary arteries the most. So uh, the blood is a working organ. It's squeezing and relaxing all the time, so it needs blood flow. And the heart gets its blood flow through uh, arteries that come off of the main artery that comes off of the heart, so, which is the aorta. And these are called the coronary arteries, and they come and they land on the surface of the heart and penetrate in and supply the, the heart with its blood flow. So the thing that we deal the most with is blockages in those coronary arteries, which develop from all kinds of processes, from inflammation and high cholesterol, age, smoking, all of these risk factors. And these blockages will actually limit uh, blood flow to the heart. Now, interestingly, most blockages do not limit blood flow at rest, uh, but they are bad enough that they will actually limit blood flow whenever you need to increase blood flow through those pipes, like during exercise. And that's actually the basis of stress tests. Now, the heart at rest has a certain blood supply, and if I draw a relationship between how tight a blood vessel blockage is and what is the blood flow, blood flow actually stays constant and normal at rest all the way up until you get about 85% blockages in the blood vessel. Now, the reason for this is because of something called autoregulation. And autoregulation says that if I have a blockage in the big vessel of the, of the heart, okay, before it goes into the muscle, then what can happen to compensate is a lot of the smaller blood vessels beyond it can dilate and decrease their resistance to compensate for the resistance caused by the blockage upstream. So it's all about balancing, the, the, heart, the body has a way of balancing resistances. So if you get a blockage, you can compensate for it by dilating blood vessels further up until a point, up until you have about 85% blockage. In cardiology, we want to be able to diagnose blood vessel blockages before they become critical and limit blood flow at rest. And so what we do is we do stress testing, where we put people on treadmills, where we have them do bicycle exercise. And in a normal artery, you essentially can increase blood flow anywhere from three to five fold going through the blood vessels of the heart. Okay? And it's because the heart's working harder. Blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up, need more blood. If you have this blockage, because the flow rate has increased through there, and it's partially, the blood flow has increased partially because of the dilation of those small vessels downstream, they're already used up. 
And because of that, we can actually detect abnormalities, if this is blood flow and this is percent stenosis, we can detect abnormalities in the blood flow at a much earlier stage by finding less augmentation of blood flow caused by the combination of using up the dilation of those small vessels downstream and the resistance from that blockage upstream.